No, 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 Gina Turgle is 90 years old next week. She shows me photographs of her family and says she's had a blessed and happy life with her husband, children, grandchildren and even great-grandchildren. But from the age of 16, she lived through the Holocaust for six long and traumatic years. On September the 1st, 1939, she remembers the Nazis storming into her family home and turning their lives upside down. After a few days, they came in some a bunch of Nazis and they say oh you've got a very nice home here but you won't be needed for very long we command you by tomorrow 12 o'clock you have to deliver all the things which we see here if not one of your children going to be shot Gina her mother and siblings did whatever the Nazis asked of them Yet still, she witnessed one brother being shot and the body of another being carried away to be dumped. Her sister was also killed by the German soldiers. There were 55 men and one girl, like my sister. They had to dig their own grave and they had to undress and they'd been shot. And that was my sister. Then we had to carry wood for the bodies to be burned. Now, can you imagine for a mother know that this is a child there and she's carrying wood for the body to be burned? So, unfortunately, your, your siblings did were murdered. That's the only way you can say by the Nazis. And then you and your mum went on to one of the concentration camps. We walked on foot to... We didn't... We were going to Auschwitz. We went during the night we slept in stables and bitter cold. At that point, I must tell you, I felt it would be so much better if they shoot us. And I was really hoping because this starvation and the fear and the frost was impossible to describe. Now, when you got to Auschwitz with your mother, you said you went into what you thought was a shower room, but actually it was a gas chamber. We walked in, we were trembling. A little while later, water came through. I scalded the water, wonderful, we drank it, we were so dry, thirsty. And we showered ourselves, and then the water stopped. We came out of there, and the women who worked there, screamed, oh, we, we, you are alive, how wonderful to see you, and embracing us. I said, what are you talking, why are you so shouting? But they said, don't you know where you've been? I said, no, where? You were in the guest chamber. Thousands of Jews were then squeezed onto trains to take them up to Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. We were in one position, the knees towards us, we were like that, we could not move or right or left. And the scream, the cry, the laugh was horrendous and the stench. They arrived in the middle of the night. There were no beds, mattresses and no windows in the barracks. Early hours of the morning I woke up and I looked through those openings and I could not believe my eyes. I've seen walking skeletons in every sense of the word. Heaps of bodies lying outside each barrack. You could not distinguish whether they were men or, or women. And I said to myself, I'm not going to die like that. Now, in Bergen-Belsen, you were able to maybe get through it because of the job you had, because you worked in the hospital, didn't you? I was working like I would have been a qualified nurse. But I must tell you, what have I been doing? That wasn't only me. It was something in me helping me to go along. Some sort of courage. Now, when was the first time you, you heard of the liberation and you heard those British troops coming to the camp? I heard the noise. And I lifted my, my head up and I saw tanks passing by. Oh, I thought, oh, they requisitioned some tanks. I didn't, couldn't distinguish what nationality. The gates opened and we had voice and two loudspeakers in all languages. We British, we came to liberate you. The Nazis, the Germans got nothing more to say to you. Be happy, 